these contradictions in one person in such a short period of time. Taliban are the reality on the ground and they are there. Now it's a reality. They took over. So the reality on the ground and I think we can talk to them. They are abusing women's rights. They are beating women publicly. مردم داره داره لازم سی روز میشه میگستم اگر تمام حقوق بررسی شد بگویم خب من نمیتانم I want to talk to Taliban I promise you I will have my burqa as well on my head while talking to you I, I really wish uh, we could delete this part of you know genocide of a, a group uh, words, slogans of Oh, have I burqa or don't? Like I want burqa or I don't want burqa, won't help anymore. On the 27th of August 2021, the BBC published a news with the headline Young Afghan mayor who fled Taliban hidden in a car. The name of this young mayor is Zarifa Akari. Ashabani had appointed her as a mayor of Maidan Shah. According to this article, exactly two days after the collapse of Kabul into the hands of the Taliban on the 17th of August, Zarifa Akari went to the airport and escaped from the Taliban fighters with the help of the Turkish ambassador in Kabul. In the same article, she adds that one day she will return to Afghanistan only when the conditions for her return are safe. Six months after this news, our young mayor wrote in a tree, I came back to my people. Why did she go and why did she come back? Total News interviewed Zarifa Ghaffari after her return, but caught my attention more than anything else in this interview was her cheerful tone, her happy face and regular laughters during her conversation. In interviews which she has done outside of Afghanistan, mainly in Germany, she mostly has a sad face and voice. She cries every now and then. At the moment I was leaving my home, I was not able to carry that. But in Afghanistan, a country occupied by terrorists, where civilians, intellectuals, women rights activists are abducted, tortured, humiliated, and killed on a daily basis. She seems perfectly happy and her words are empty and meaningless. Dan darin dan gap bizani. Az danatan, az az gapatan, az mantaqatan istifada kuni. In another tweet she writes, shame on those who are normalizing Taliban by posting funny selfies with them. Here's a question for you, Mrs. Afari. Don't you think that you return to Afghanistan, interviews with various media, doing charity works, posting pictures on social media, are also deeds that can normalize the barbaric regime of the Taliban. Now, who is Zarifa Akwari? I have done a mini research on her. From her writings and interviews, her beliefs and ideologies are revealed that can help us know more about this mysterious character. I have found many issues. Let us have a look at them together. Issue number one. She is clearly in favor of negotiations with the Taliban. She has not learned from the fact that in the last 20 years, millions have been wasted on the peace negotiations with the Taliban, which proved to be a flop attempt. She, however, insists on negotiations and says the following. I want to talk to them. I want to talk to Taliban. Because if they really want to have a government, um, you know, recognition by international community and everything, they're not able to do it without a woman. Zarifa Afari considers the Taliban to be the truth of Afghanistan, the grand reality, as she puts it, and believes that we must accept them and work with them instead of overthrowing them. But they are now there, they are reality on the ground, and I think we can talk to them and we can solve it out. I call like all on Taliban's leaders, especially this. Mullah Haibatullah and the one who is there in Afghanistan, Mullah Brother. I'll come and sit and talk to you. I promise you, I will have my burqa as well on my head while talking to you. I won't show my face to you while talking to you. But let's talk. At least let's talk. 
In order to have a dialogue, or at least a foreground for it, she very skillfully condemns the war and military resistance against the Taliban in various ways. For example, in one of her interviews, she equates the resistance movements with ISIS and the Taliban, saying that only women in Afghanistan are the victim of war, not everyone. May not just busy with fighting within Taliban, Daesh, Muqawmat, Mujahideen, blah, 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 blah. And those who were like at least having a little bit more, they just fleed out. Moreover, in response to a headline by Afghanistan International involving the formation of a new anti-Taliban front in Afghanistan, she writes, Afghan men and women are nowadays going through a lot. We are already having things. We are tired of being murdered. Please. I know, fighting against terror is must now, but not with gun and terror. Because at the end of this, again, there will be all Afghan innocent people murdered and tortured. Well, pay attention to this post. I repeat her words. Fighting against terror is a must now, but not with gun and terror. She doesn't see any difference between those who occupy Afghanistan and those who resist against them. In her writings and interviews, I have not come across a single statement that criticizes the brutal attack of the Taliban on the Panjshir Valley, the barbaric killing and torture of Panjshiris in Panjshir, the illegal inspection of Tajik houses in Kabul, the arbitrary detention of Panjshiris in Kabul, and many more. Terrorism has a clear definition. It is the illegal use of violence, especially against civilians, in pursuit of political goals. What the Taliban have done and are doing now fits this definition. But the anti-Taliban military resistance does not fit into this definition for two main reasons. Firstly, it is a legitimate and well-established, well-justified resistance against the tyranny and illegitimate rule of the Taliban. Secondly, the resistance had the support of people from different levels of society, men, women, children, seculars, religious people, rich, poor, and so on. Resistance against the Taliban cannot be considered terrorism under any circumstances. Rather, it is the legitimate struggle of Afghanistanis to reclaim their land from the terrorist Taliban. So uh, looking at the Taliban, there are reports um, that they're targeting specific ethnic and religious minorities, including the Tajiks and the Hazaras. What is their end goal with this? Is it intimidation and violence uh, or is it ethnic cleansing leading up to a genocide? I really wish uh, we could delete this part of, you know, genocide of a, a group. It's genocide of a nation. So I think uh, if we say this and we could share our thoughts on that, it will be more better. I do just want to point out that under international law, genocide is uh, the targeting of specific ethnic or religious groups. So in this case, it does um, make sense to talk. Going forward, in order to provide a second foreground for negotiations with the Taliban, Khafari this time compromises women's freedom and achievements. Watch this video of Zarifan Afari walking on the streets of Berlin talking about joys of freedom and how she enjoys being outside of Afghanistan. Here I am I'm free to walk wherever I want. Here I freely enjoy my humanitarian rights, you know, that all basic rights. Well, I wasn't able to have it there in Afghanistan. But in another interview, she allows terrorists to determine women's clothing to determine what we should wear and go to school with. Or are you giving me the right to go to school or not? If you're angry with going, like with my going to school, then what, going to school with burqa or without burqa doesn't matter for me. With burqa or without burqa doesn't matter. This may not matter to you, but for most women like us, it does. As a woman activist, she should ask herself this question, why should we give a bunch of terrorists the right to assign the type of cover for us? She defends her position in another tree. If I can go to work, school, and university in Afghanistan, I really don't care about how I dress up. I think style is not a primary right. This tree again has two big issues. Firstly, the use of the word style. We are 
are not talking about style here. Style is not and has never been our primary concern. It is the compulsory hijab that we are fighting and standing against. We are against burqa, we are against chadari. Such covers limits women's freedom, limits our movement, and also very hard to breathe while wearing them. I believe someone who calls herself a women's rights activist should know the difference between clothing, cover, and style. A second issue in this street is the emphasis on girls' education. Many are trying to put pressure on the Taliban Islamic Emirate to allow girls to go to school. But have you ever thought what kind of education the misogynist Taliban would possibly provide for girls in Afghanistan? It is very naive to think that the Taliban would provide quality education for girls. One of such naive optimists is Zarifa Hafari. Have a look at her tweet. Reports on some media says Taliban allowed girls to school in Herat province. If it's true, I'm so happy. Meanwhile, after all this, she also calls Taliban terrorists, her enemies, who cannot be trusted, who should not be negotiated. It was a try to destroy a generation, a nation, a country, selling them out to their enemies. My dad's killers are there. And they are doing all human rights abuses. They are abusing women rights. They are beating women publicly. They are beating men publicly. They are destroying everything. They destroyed everything of my life. They destroyed everything of women life. But for how within a few months the Taliban become the ground reality of Afghanistan? On the ground. So Taliban, when Taliban are the reality on the ground and they are there, I think we need to, uh, we need to... But they are now there, the reality on the ground, and I think we can talk to them and we can solve it out. Expect, but yeah, now it's a reality. They took over. So... Uh, ignoring realities on ground won't help us anymore making the process and, 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 and like you know uh, words slogans of oh have i burqa or don't like i want burqa or i don't want burqa won't help anymore most recently she was a guest on another tv station in afghanistan there too she has expressed contradictory and conservative views about the taliban and she did not criticize them whatsoever to ba afghanistan amaden vaziyat az nazdik mebinen dar hal hazaram dar kabul ba sar mebinen حقوق شهروندی مردم داره در حال حاضر با مو حقوق که لازم هستند باید داشته باشند دارن خب تا جایی که خب بسیار چند روز دو سه روز میشه من اینجا هستم اگر تمام حقوق بررسی شه بگویم خب من نمیتونم تمام حقوق بررسی شه بکنم ولی آن چیزی را که من در خارج از این کشور و داخل این کشور دید و متشنید و متانوس ما خب فکر میکنم ما افغان ها نیاز داریم امیدوار باشیم به با او خواهد ما امیدوار هستم مقصر اگه... کی است؟ کی را میدانه که زنها سر سرک خیرات جمع کنه مقصر کی است؟ همه گی گفتم به فرفرد ای... خب اگر بگویم به فرفرد ای وطن به ای وطن میگمش به ای وطن به ای خاک به ای هوا All these contradictions in one person, in such a short period of time. Now such a woman, who does not dare to tell the truth bluntly, has never criticized the Taliban as much as she should, is chosen as the woman of courage by the new Secretary of State, listed in 100 inspiring and influential women of 2019 by BBC, wins the title of change maker, and also represented us in the European Parliament. Why are such mysterious, contradictory characters chosen as our representative in the West? It's time for you to stop and think.